Welcome to the Monday Night Bible Study. Hello, Lavender. Um, this is Shalom Doty. And I'm glad to see you. Lavender's here, but not Nanny Dove. Funny. Our format tonight is same as always. It's welcome, song, prayer, sharing, and closing. Somebody just popped in. Mario. Hi, Mario. Here's our song by Don Moen. Um, we just started. It's Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. Because it's the month of November. So we're going to talk about Thanksgiving. Giving thanks. Okay? For the whole month. Maybe. Okay, let's listen together and then type done. a grateful heart give thanks to the holy one give thanks because he's given jesus christ his son give thanks with a grateful heart give thanks I should have turned on the sound, my microphone on. Well, the prayer is spoken. 
So, Father God, we do give thanks. Lord, we thank you for the gift of Jesus. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for sanctification, although quite often it's difficult for us, but we still thank you so much for never giving up on us, for loving us and conforming us and transforming us into the image of your own dear son. Lord, what a role model. So, Father, we bless you in this night. I thank you for the healing of um, Violinist's shoulder that's going on and that nothing else has happened. And Lord, I ask that for each one here who has a physical need, a spiritual need, an emotional need, or a psychological need, any kind of need, Lord, that you would reach down to touch, to heal, and to restore. And Father, I thank you that when you restore, you restore us to your original design and not to what was. So Father, move among us and have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. It's November 1st. Um, Yesterday was, I was glad yesterday was over. (laughs) And it's over for a whole year. This is now November, and in the United States, Thanksgiving holiday is celebrated at at the end of November, I think the last Thursday of November. Um, In my mind, as I got ready to prepare for us tonight, wandered to an attitude of gratitude. We've talked about that off and on. Yesterday was also the five-year anniversary of my husband's death. And during the years of his illness, That's when I really learned to live with an attitude of gratitude, and it makes such a difference. Um, I learned to go about doing the hard stuff and being alert for what I call little gifts that God scatters throughout my day. And God scatters gifts throughout your day. And you know what? Looking at your necks here, each one of you are a little gift that God has sent for all of us. Every member of this site is a little gift that God sent, and a blessing. Some of the other little gifts, um, you may think of your own. You can type one in if you think of one. It's like I'd be walking out of the hospital or in to visit him in the hospital, and I would be in a very not-so-good mood walking along this very boring sidewalk from this very far away parking lot and I would see a little flower weed growing out of the thing and I go oh god thank you for that or the sun would come and cover the cloud because it's quite hot in Florida where I live most of the time I'll be like thank you god for letting me walk in the shade today or um for getting out of there while it was still daylight you know just little things a smile from a random baby at the grocery store is such a blessing hey rose carnation So we all get, God sends us little gifts all day long. I found a snake skin the other day. I'm not kidding. I was walking along the sidewalk and I, and I found a snake skin and there was no snake. (laughs) Skin had been there a while. And I was so excited to find a snake skin because I could give it to my grandchildren and let them touch it and feel it and really experience what a snake skin is like. And so that was a little gift. Odd, a snake skin, but a gift. So, after I thought about those little gifts, my heart and my mind began to wander. I do that a lot when I'm preparing. And it wandered to a verse that's kind of the backbone for living in an attitude of gratitude, no matter what. And have you ever really wondered in this verse why God instructs us? To give thanks in everything. And you might be wanting to say, really? Give thanks for everything? But it doesn't say for everything. It says in the midst of everything. So really, when we're sick, when our Jeep is stuck in the mud and there's no cell phone service, give thanks. When traffic delays us or friends betray us. When someone we die, love dies, really? But it says, give thanks in in everything. 
And that's exactly what it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Which says, we're going to look at that verse. See to it that no one repays anyone evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to everyone. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances. Why? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And in that little tiny one, two, three, four verses, there's a whole lot of stuff, good stuff. Giving thanks is not the only difficult instruction right there, is it? Let's see. Uh, it can be kind of difficult when it says, do not repay evil with evil. Okay? So if we're hurt or mad or we've been wronged or we do not get to repay them in kind. In fact, we are instructed to do the exact opposite. We are told to always seek to do good to one another and to everyone. One another implies people we know. Probably people we care about. All the people here are part of, we're one another tonight. Those others in our circle of family or friends. But the word did not stop there, did it? It didn't say to one another. It said to everyone. Seek to do good to everyone. Really? God. That person? Who just cut us off in traffic and made us miss the light when we were already late for work? Or that person who made those prices rise so high lately? Really? We're supposed to be kind to them? That one who drives me crazy online? Or the person who hurt me and continues to wound my heart? Yep, I imagine so, since those are all part of everyone. It says quite clearly, everyone. God's direction. His instructions are not always easy. Usually they're simple and clear, but not necessarily easy to heed. And yet, that leads to peace. And he told us something else in that little bit of scripture, in those four verses. He told us to rejoice always. And remember, joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit and also our strength. Joy comes from God. But it's kind of like a lovely flower hidden in weeds. That joy is, you know. We need to get rid of the weeds or we need to invite God to do that for us. And then the passage says, Pray without ceasing. Prayer truly can become our first line defense and it can become a lifestyle. I often, um, I didn't realize it until the little started imitating me, but I often thank God out loud for simple things like a cloud over the sun on a hot day or a parking spot. And um, and I never really was aware that I did it until lately. The littles do it too. Or they might add to one of my random, oh, look, a great parking space. Thank you, God. We went to the uh, ice cream store Wednesday, last Wednesday. And I wanted, I wanted to sit at the table with the umbrella and make sure the shade stayed on me the whole time. So I said to the boys, put your water bottle on that table while we go inside to get our ice cream and come back out and I came back out and somebody else was sitting at that table that I wanted for myself because you know what those little boys 
the bigger one, had moved their water bottles. And I said, Kay, so why did you move the water bottles? He said, well, they needed a place to sit, and I figured we could sit over there. <laughs> like, that was so sweet of him. But I wanted that table that I picked. But actually, the table he picked for us was so nice. I know, and it's like you learn to live an attitude of gratitude. He said, we didn't need it. We weren't ready yet. Well, we were like two seconds from ready, but wasn't that a kind thing for a little boy to do? And then they did something else, and then and then the man in the store said, you know, those are the nicest little boys I've ever seen. And I said, yeah, their parents are pretty strict. <laughs> but it was a good story, so we... we um. We thank God, and then and then I then we moved. Then somebody else left at another table with him, another umbrella. And I said, "Oh, thank you, God. Look, look, guys, we got a table with an umbrella, and you were really kind to those people. And God gave us one too. And the littlest one, who's six, folded his little hands and he said, "Thank you, God, for the umbrella table for Mimi." <laughs> Isn't that a great story? So I wanted to spend tonight, I wasn't planning to tell you the story, but it's a great story. I wanted to spend time pondering about the part which says giving thanks in everything. And I'm using Got Questions as a jumping off place and I'll give you the link later. So let's see. It was a fun story, too, wasn't it? In a very practical section of Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, he encourages his readers to give thanks in everything. That's 1 Thessalonians 5.18, which we already read. In the immediate context, he had also exhorted them to rejoice always and to pray without ceasing. These are, to rejoice always and pray without seeking, ceasing, these are recognizable characteristics of a person who is encouraged and growing in his or her faith. Isn't it neat that the Lord encourages us in our faith? And when he encourages us or when someone else encourages us in our faith, then we just encourage others it's like it's like when you throw a stone a rock or or something into a pond and then you have all those ripples coming out god encourages us and then we naturally encourage others without even planning to do it it's really neat the first two the this author says that the first two in the list are easy enough to understand. Being joyful and prayerful are not complex ideas. But Paul's instruction that the Thessalonian believers should give thanks in everything presents a unique challenge. Would you find that challenging sometimes? Sometimes. It, it, you know, it can become a lifestyle. But, but it's not automatic. It's part of the transformation. It's worth noting that Paul does not tell them to give thanks. Yes, and growing up. It, Paul does not tell them to give thanks for everything. The preposition used in 1 Thessalonians 5.18 is the Greek N, which is best translated in. Paul isn't telling them. that they must be thankful for the difficulties they were encountering. Instead, he is challenging them to be thankful in, from within, any circumstance. Paul recognized that the secret of contentment isn't found in, a, in circumstances. Being content is a choice. Being blessed is positional. We are blessed because we are children of God. Being content is a, an intentional choice we make. Especially when things are not that easy. And hi, Nanny Dove. I see you came in. And if I missed anybody else, I'm sorry. And um, Doty note. There is a huge difference in being thankful 
for something and being thankful in, in, in the midst of it. Even during our hardest seasons, there are tons of things to be thankful for. A primary one being that God is with us because he is Emmanuel. And the um, author tells us that rather there is contentment in recognizing it is Christ who strengthens us for whatever we might face. That's Philippians 4, 11 through 13, which we're going to read. I'm going to put it all there at once. Absolutely, Quorum Deo. So 11 through 13 says, Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And uh, don't you know what I think about this? I love that passage, by the way. Paul did not by any means have an easy life after he began following Jesus. In fact, it became much harder than before he followed Jesus. So don't don't let anybody tell you that, oh, come to Jesus, get saved, and everything will be perfect, and you will never be sick, and you will never have a problem. They're lying. That's not how it works. Oh, well, good. So, Paul did not mean an easy life, have an, by, Paul did not have an easy life after he began following Jesus. In fact, it became much harder than before that, because before that, he was rich, he was famous, and he was popular. And then he was hated, he was persecuted, and so on. And yet Paul said he has learned to be content no matter what. And I'm going to tell you a little secret that God taught me to do. Um, once, during a very difficult season, which went on for like 10 years or 15 I did not want to go on and on about my woes. So, when someone asked me how I was, often, this is what I said. And if you've known me online, you've seen me say this years ago. I am blessed and content. We are blessed because that is positional and comes from being in Christ. And we choose to be content. And in that moment, when somebody at church or out at store, or I was still working part of the time, or at school said, how are you? And I said, I'm blessed and content. I was content because someone was being nice and talking to me. So if somebody asks you how you are, that makes you feel good. They care about me. They're asking me how I am. So if you focus on that gift of their caring for you, then you can be content in that moment. Sure, in the five minutes from now, you might be dealing with God knows what. But in that moment, that's a good moment. Isn't that neat? I'm blessed, it's positional. I'm content, it's a choice. Look at Paul's list of woes that he listed for us in the scripture. <laughs> he's brought low. He's hungry. He's needy. And he did not even mention the beatings, the betrayals, and like Coram Dea reminded us, the times he was in jail. And yet, Paul oh, has learned the secret to being content. And I believe that his secret to being content was a total reliance on God who gave him the strength. He said that, but I also believe that Paul used praise, thanksgiving, gratitude, and prayer to keep his mind and his heart focused on Jesus and his and Jesus' loving presence and mighty power. And the author, we're back to the author now. Isn't this interesting, uh, the way these people presented this for us? 
it is also evident that God allows things in our lives to help us grow to be more like Christ. In fact, that the pursuit of Christ likeness, and if you go to the link, you can click on Christ likeness and read an article. It, Christ likeness, the pursuit of Christ likeness, is the primary purpose God has for us in sanctification, which is being set apart or holy. We are being transformed. And Dodie note, and this is an interesting thought. Someone once told me that my personal, temporary happiness was a lot less important to God than my eternal salvation and sanctification. Not because he doesn't love me, because he does love me. And it's the same for you. Your being happy in this moment is a whole lot less important to God than your eternal salvation and sanctification. And uh, here's an example that'll help you think of that, how that might work. Think drug addict, okay? We all know that for a drug addict, heroin addict, their happy place is the next high, right? We also know that that happy or high is temporary and fleeting and does not result in any sort of long-term joy and purpose, but is a counterfeit of the real thing. So sometimes what we want or think will make us happy might indeed in that fleeting moment make us happy, but not in the eternal long term. So we can be grateful when God does not help us out that way. He isn't going to give us any happy heroin. heroin. Yes, we are, lady. And he is all we need, whether we know it or not. And then, and then they remind us Is me. Luann's typing and Nanny Dub is typing and I'm waiting. Lady said we are needy people. May Christ be all we need. Oh, you didn't have to stop Luann. We're going to go to a different thought after this. We learn from each other. You guys know stuff that I don't know. You've experienced things that I've never experienced, and I and the same for me and you. Yes, you're right. She was said she was just thinking about where we spend eternity is what counts. It does. And Nanny Dove said, considering all I've been through, and she's been through a lot lately, I am content in him. Isn't that wonderful? It's great to get on the other side of something or even just get kind of halfway up the hill, that insurmountable mountain that God's going to move. I like the way we're all thinking and applying this to our own situation because, you know, the scripture is awesome and it never returns void, but it doesn't do a whole lot for us if we don't interact with it and apply it to our lives. And I see I and Psalmist typing. And we have plenty of time, so. Mm. Remember that series we did about we were thanking God for all these things that we could thank God for a, a few, a month ago? For friends, for family, for relationships, for the four Gospels. And I said, it's replying to what Luana said, and he said, it is, our life here is only a detour on our way to eternity. Have you ever seen that where they draw a really long line and um, they put a teeny tiny dot about one-eighth of the way from the left to the right, and they say, this is your, that little tiny dot is your life on earth, and all the rest is eternity. Oh, I love that song. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light 
of his glory and grace. That's a beautiful song. What will we do with the time that's left is an excellent question. Well, I sang that song because I love that song. <laughs> and I can't sing very well, especially with the hoarse voice. But if so, the next thought if God works all things together for the good of those who love him, which Romans 8 28 says, and that is good, and it is good that we would be more like Christ, then we can expect that he even uses the hardships in our lives to help shape us to be more like him. So let's see the entire verse, Romans 8, 28. And it actually says, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. It's um, interesting. That's one of those out of context verses, you know. It's interesting what the all things work together for our good actually quite likely refers to good as the process of being conformed more and more into the image of Christ. Isn't that interesting? And also interesting is that much of the time when Romans 8.28 is quoted, the last part for those who are called according to his purpose is left out. It says, people love to say, Romans 8.28 says, all things work together for the good, for our good. That's true. But what is our ultimate good? It's to be sanctified, to be transformed, to re be renewed in our minds, transformed in our actions. Even our thoughts are, are transformed. They become more like God. And but Mario said there's a big salvation, justification, sanctification, glorification promise in this too. Yes, it is. So God... In Romans eight twenty eight, because it's um, it's interesting that uh, the part that says for those who are called according to His purpose is left out, because He works for that purpose in our lives. We can be filled with gratitude, knowing that there is purpose even in the difficulties that we cannot understand. In Romans five three. Paul uses some even stronger language than he uses in 1 Thessalonians. Um, he explains that we can exalt or rejoice. Exalt is like loud singing. That we can exalt or rejoice even in suffering because of what the suffering produces in us. And this is not our favorite passage. But here it is. Romans 5, 3 through 5. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. Suffering brings perseverance and if you click on the link i give you that you can um, click on that word perseverance too and read a whole study on that suffering brings perseverance perseverance develops proven or tested character character that has been tested develops hope and god's kind of hope never disappoints that's not the same thing as i hope my blister will stop hurting that's hope the sure and certain knowledge that God has good things in store for us and that our eternal destiny is secure. So if the author said, if God can use suffering and trials that way to help us mature, and somebody said that earlier, then those experiences are worth it.
can't remember who said that, but somebody said that word mature. Like Paul encourages the Corinthians, the momentary afflictions we encounter in this life are producing what he calls an eternal weight of glory. Paul adds that the sufferings we encounter today are nothing compared to the glory that we will see in the future. In other words, it's all worth it, guys. And let's see what those passages actually say. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 through 18 actually says, For his light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, fleeting, but the things that are unseen are eternal. And Mario said the world might say, ignore the pain, avoid the pain, but you can see here what God tells us instead. Yeah, I've heard um, counselors, I have friends that are counselors, I've heard them say, lean into the pain. In other words, yes, it hurts. Well, yesterday when it was the anniversary of my husband's death and I, I was driving home after I saw the little kids all dressed up for Halloween and uh, I got in the car and I was all alone and I said, I feel so lonely. I'm so sad. And I, and I, I, I mean, I cried it, you know, and then boom, just like that, it was gone. And I had a great day. The whole day was great. That one moment I leaned into the pain and then. It was over because God was there, right there in my car with me. And Romans 8.18 says, Well, then you can have a God day too, Nanny Dove. I pray that you have a God day, that you see those little gifts that God scatters all around. And remember, David, and lean into the pain, but don't stay there all day. Romans 8.18 says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed in us. And the author said, Yes, he is faithful. If we have this kind of big picture perspective, we can give thanks in everything because we understand how God is using those things in our lives to grow us now and in the future. And Jesus illustrates that principle for his disciples. And he has a great example if you've ever had a child or been with someone who had a child. While they had that child, uh, John, he gives that illustration in John 16, 21, and it says, The pain of childbirth is exceedingly severe, and during labor, it might not seem worth it at all. But when that mother holds her newborn, she is no longer considering the pain, but only the joy that has been produced. If we could see our pain our daily pain, our daily struggles, our daily sufferings as light and momentary afflictions compared to eternity or as like the pains of childbirth because God is doing something wonderful in us and we know where our final destiny is or destination. And John sixteen twenty one, the literal scripture says, <laughs> When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish or joy that a human being has been born into this world. And this was written in the days when childbirth was completely natural with no painkillers. Not like nowadays. And the author says, In the same way, we can give thanks in all things, knowing that the difficulties, the hardships, and the sufferings are like the pains of labor, and that the outcome of proven character, going back to that other scripture, and certain hope is like holding a newborn baby. 
There is power. You know that song? I bet Corm Gayo knows this song to him. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. Is that how it goes? In the blood? You knew what song I was going to come to, violinist? <laughs> I wish I had pulled that. That would be so fun to listen to. There is power in understanding what God has revealed about how he causes us to grow. His methods may be painful at times, but the outcome is the peaceful fruit of righteousness. And they reference Hebrews 12, 7 through 11. So we'll read that. Now I've got that song in my head. Power, power, wonder, working power. It is for discipline <laughs> that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. And besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as it deemed seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good that we may share in his holiness. For the moment, <laughs> all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. But later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. And as a teacher, anybody who's ever been a teacher, I think Lady has in Coram Deo, the most miserable children I ever met as a teacher had parents who did not love them enough to discipline them or teach them manners. If you are a parent, you know how hard it is to say no when your child really wants something. Even if you're a cat parent or a dog parent and they're looking at you, them little cat eyes or dog eyes, and they're wanting your food and you know they're allergic to that kind of food and you say no. It's really hard to say no when your child really wants something, but it leads to learning to delay satisfaction. And sometimes those kids get rip roaring angry too, don't they? Yes, even when they're older and we have to stop enabling some of us. Oh. Yeah, I was thinking of the cookie jar, Mario. It's like that cookie jar. You know that cookie's there. We know that cookie. Whatever it is we want in the moment is there. But, but Father God knows that there's a banquet. There's a feast. There's something much better than a cookie. And we just have to wait a few minutes. I love the cookie jar analogy. Yes, salad. <laughs> but salad's better for our eternal good than that cookie. When our perspective is informed by his word, giving thanks in everything makes perfect sense. So, Father, we do, we do thank you that you are not easy on us, that you, that your yoke is easy and your burden is light, but that when we need a big, strong no or a big, strong wait or a big, strong this, not that, that you love us enough to discipline us. You love us enough to tell us no. And yet, even while you're telling us no, and even while we're having our little hissy fit, you're right there to comfort us and carry us and bring us through to the other side. So, Father, we bless you. We thank you for this word, and we thank you for one another, and we thank you for Jesus. In your holy name, amen. And if you'd like to read that article or have it for yourself without my doty comments, uh -uh. I'll give you the link. Coram Deo said Thanksgiving is almost a synonym for the Christian life. It is. It is the response of gratitude to God's saving activity 
in creation and redemption, and thus a recognition that he is the ultimate source of every blessing. No, please don't hurt yourself. Here's the link, and I'll pin the link for you, because um, if you go to the link, you can read those two things that you click on that are referenced there. And so I'll save that for a few days. I miss it too, but there's no way. Thank you for coming. And I'm going to find Wonder Working Blood, unless somebody else has already found it, and put it in the um, fellowship room so we can listen to it. There's power, power, wonder working power, okay? And I'm going to find Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. What great songs. God bless. You're welcome. Night, Luana.